this dog was about to say goodbye to its owner when it noticed something very odd and stopped the funeral. Buster was a scruffy terrier mix, and he trembled beside the shiny brown casket. The casket held his best friend Henry. Henry was the only person who had taken care of him for the past five years, but now he was gone. Today was his funeral, and the choir sang sad hymns, while well-wishers sniffled and wiped their noses with tissues. Henry had been sick for a while, so his passing wasn't a complete shock. But seeing him so still and quiet made Buster feel so sad. As the priest spoke kind words about Henry, Buster perked his ears to listen. Of course, the dog couldn't understand the priest's long speech, but it whimpered like a scared puppy as it listened. The dog nudged the cold, smooth wood of the casket with his nose. It was its own quiet way of saying goodbye to the kind man who had saved them from a life of scrabbling for scraps on the street. Suddenly, a young woman with tear-streaked cheeks walked towards the casket. Her eyes were red and puffy, and she walked as if she was going to fall. The young lady bent down and placed a single red rose on the casket. The moment her hand touched the wood, Buster began to bark loudly. He lunged forward at the lady and kept barking. The mourners gasped, and their attention was pulled away from the eulogy. A kind neighbor tried to shush the dog, telling him to be quiet, but his barking only grew louder. No amount of soothing words or gentle pats could calm him down. The entire funeral stopped because of Buster's sudden outburst. Some people were angry at the dog. They tried to chase him away, calling it a bad dog who didn't want his owner to rest peacefully. The truth was that Buster was not a bad dog, and he hadn't always been Henry's loyal companion. Before meeting Henry, Buster's life was a cold and lonely struggle. His former owner, Rufus, was a man burdened by bad luck, and he blamed Buster for everything that went wrong. It all started a week after Rufus brought home the tiny and playful puppy, which he named Buster. Tragedy struck and Rufus's young child unexpectedly fell ill and passed away. In his grief, the man convinced himself that the dog was somehow bad luck. His kindness towards Buster vanished and he began to see the dog as a symbol of his misfortune. Things went downhill for Rufus soon after. His business collapsed, further adding to his worries. But the man couldn't bring himself to admit his own mistakes and he continued to blame the innocent dog. Buster's life suddenly turned bleak. Instead of cuddles and treats, the dog soon began to receive harsh words and kicks. Soon enough, Rufus started taking Buster on walks, only to abandon him in strange places. He was hoping the dog wouldn't find his way back, but Buster always managed to return. One day, Rufus drove Buster far away from home, hoping he would get lost. Buster did get lost and scared, yet the dog used his strong sense to sniff out the familiar route back home. This happened a few more times, with Rufus abandoning him further each time. Finally, the man packed his bags and left for the city, leaving Buster behind. Alone and confused, Buster became a stray. The busy streets were a scary place for the small animals, and it was filled with loud noises and unfamiliar smells. Buster was chased by bigger dogs and mocked by street children, but most of all, he was constantly hungry. He'd occasionally return to his old house, searching for the familiar scent of his owner and hoping for a scrap of food, but the new family living there would chase him away with brooms and harsh words. One particularly cold night, Buster was huddled beneath a park bench and shivering uncontrollably, when a group of loud boys suddenly appeared and began throwing snowballs at the cowering animal. It was then that Henry on his evening walk spotted Buster for the first time. Henry was an elderly man with a kind face, and he stood up for the dog. As soon as he saw the cruel act, he scolded the boys in a firm voice and chased them away. Henry then gently approached the shivering creature to check if he had been hurt. But the dog flinched back as if he were scared that the old man would hurt him the same way the street kids had. So Henry had to be patient. He knelt and offered his hand for the scared animal to sniff. Buster hesitantly raised his head and sniffed at the air for any sign of danger. When he sensed no threat, the dog cautiously inched closer. Henry felt happy as the dog leaned into his touch. He gently scratched behind the dog's ears and patted his fur calmly. The dog whined softly and wagged his tail weakly. The old man knew the dog was hungry, so he reached into his pocket and pulled out a small piece of sausage. He moved his hand slowly to avoid startling the dog. Buster quickly took the offering. After eating, his bony frame finally relaxed a little. Henry knew this dog needed help, so he took the animal to his home and away from the biting cold outside. Exhausted from the ordeal, Buster curled up at the foot of the armchair and nodded off to sleep. The next morning, Henry woke up to a surprise. He saw the dog curled up around his leg. The old man could only smile. The dog had chosen to stay. This wasn't just any stray. This was a dog in need. And Henry, who had known his fair share of loneliness, 
understood that feeling. He scooped the dog up and took him to the vet. At the vet's office, the animal doctor confirmed what Henry had suspected. The dog was malnourished and needed medical attention, but beyond that, he needed a home. He needed a place where he wouldn't be afraid, somewhere he could finally trust again. And in that moment, Henry knew he wouldn't be turning this lost soul away. The old man took care of everything and ensured the dog received proper treatment. The dog had his name on his collar, and so Henry kept calling him Buster. Soon, the old man and the rescued dog became the best of friends. They ate together, went for walks in the park, and even slept in the same bed at night. Sometimes, they would head to the mall together. Henry would carry his shopping list, and Buster would trot happily by his side. In the evenings, they would cuddle up by the fireplace, and Henry would teach Buster some fun tricks. Buster filled the void that Henry had felt for years. He had been all alone ever since his wife and kids sadly passed away in an accident. He never married again, and his days were pretty quiet, but finding Buster changed everything. Now he had a furry companion to share his life with, and it made the last three years of his life feel less lonely. The only other person who visited Henry was his niece Clara. However, Clara and Henry didn't always see eye to eye. Their visits often ended in arguments, and Clara would get mad and storm out of the house in anger. But a few days before Henry's funeral, Clara came to visit. Henry had been sick for a while, and he had been relying on the doctor and the kindness of his neighbors to get by. Yet despite his health, Henry was worried about what would happen to Buster after he was gone. So he made Clara promise to take care of the dog after he was gone. Clara said yes, but something about her smile didn't seem quite right. Henry knew Clara did not like Buster, and she had always pressured him to send them off. But this time, the old man deeply hoped that his niece would honor his final wish. After spending some time with him, Clara made a promise to check in on him again, and she left. Little did Henry know this would be their last conversation. At the funeral, Buster recognized a young woman near Henry's casket as Clara. The dog had never liked Clara because whenever she visited, she'd shoo him away or make faces like he smelled bad. She always nagged Henry to get rid of him or just put him outside. But today, this wasn't just about this like. There was something about her that sent shivers down his spine. As he leaned closer to the casket, a faint whiff tickled Buster's nose. It was a faint smell, but his memory clicked. It was the same scent that filled the air at the vet's office. The smell of the injections given to rabid dogs to put them out of their misery. Buster remembered the needles and the sad look on those dogs' faces when they were injected. With that familiar vet smell clinging to her, a terrible suspicion gnawed at Buster. Could she have done something to hurt Henry? Just as one of the attendants tried to close the casket lid, Buster began to bark loudly. With a powerful lunge, he pulled against his leash. His barks grew louder and more frantic. The priest stopped mid-sentence. His brow furrowed in confusion as everyone turned towards the commotion. Clara recoiled her face draining of color. The mourners gasped, and their hushed whispers were replaced by shocked silence. Buster circled the casket, barking like crazy, his whole body trembling with worry. No one had ever seen him act like this. People tried to calm him down, but Buster wouldn't stop. He barked again and again, circling the casket. Clara tried to regain her composure, but the dog's outburst had shifted everyone's attention to her. Murmurs rippled through the crowd. What was wrong with the dog? Why was he acting out at the funeral? Some well-meaning folks, fearing Buster might lash out, tried to pull him away, but he strained against the leash, his whines morphing into frustrated yelps. The priest raised his hand, urging the crowd to be calm. He said that perhaps the dog was simply expressing his grief in his own way. He reminded everyone that losing a loved one could cause strong emotions, even in animals. Buster, however, wasn't finished. At that moment, the dog saw his chance. He darted through the legs of the crowd and straight towards Officer Ramirez. Ramirez was the friendly sheriff who always gave his belly rubs during his walks with Henry. Whining softly, Buster nudged his hand with his wet nose, then did something extraordinary. He turned and trotted purposefully toward Clara, looking back repeatedly at Officer Ramirez as if asking him to follow. Sheriff Ramirez was confused. He knelt beside Buster and gently asked what was wrong. Buster whined again and his eyes were pleading. He nudged the sheriff's hand once more and then started walking again, this time pulling slightly on the leash towards Clara. Officer Ramirez was intrigued by the dog's unusual behavior, but he followed them. He watched as Buster stopped right in front of Clara and began barking once more. By now, Clara's forced smile had vanished completely, and it was replaced by a mask of fear and nervous fidgeting. Buster whined again, and his tail wagged furiously even as he kept glancing back at Clara. Ramirez was a man known for his intuition, 
and he could see the dog's insistent gaze on Clara. Something didn't feel right. He decided to get to the bottom of this. The commotion had halted the funeral service, and the priest allowed Officer Ramirez some time to look into the matter. He knew Buster's behavior was out of character. Following Buster's frantic lead, Ramirez found himself at Henry's house. It was a place he knew well because he had patrolled the neighborhood for years. As they got into the house, Buster suddenly perked up and twitched his nose excitedly. He darted towards the front door and barked at the sheriff to follow him. Officer Ramirez followed closely as Buster led him straight to Clara's car parked across the street. The car was unlocked and Buster jumped through the open window with his nose glued to the car seat. He sniffed around frantically with a very low growl rumbling in his throat. Officer Ramirez approached the car cautiously, his hand instinctively going to his holster. Then he saw it. There was something hidden under the driver's seat, partially covered by a floor mat. It was a small box and Buster nudged it with his paw. Ramirez carefully retrieved the box and his heart pounded as he opened it. What he saw inside shocked him. There were several crumpled tissues and Henry's missing gold watch. Ramirez remembered that Henry wore it only on special occasions, but that wasn't all. There was a syringe along with several small vials filled with clear liquid. Ramirez also recognized the bottles. There were the same medications prescribed to Henry shortly before his passing. The pieces began to fall into place. Buster's strange behavior and now this all painted a disturbing picture. Just as the weight of the situation was sinking in, Clara rushed towards the car with her eyes wide in panic. But as soon as she spotted Officer Ramirez, holding the incriminating box, the young lady froze in fear. In a desperate attempt to flee, Clara tried to run off towards the back of the property. However, she was blinded by panic, so she tripped and tumbled into a freshly dug pit. It was part of the yard that Henry had been planning to convert into a flower garden before he died. Officer Ramirez quickly rushed to the pit. His suspicion was momentarily overridden by concern. The attending deputies rushed to her aid, pulling her out of the pit. Clara was muddied with a twisted ankle, but she was finally apprehended. The evidence spoke for itself. The hidden box, the medication, and Clara's panicked behavior all pointed toward the horrifying truth. Clara had been driven by greed, so she poisoned her own uncle for his inheritance. She had secretly gotten the lethal injections used for dogs, and she had been injecting them into Henry's drugs when she visited. Clara did this because she had been trying to convince her uncle to sell his grand mansion, which was worth millions for years. She had used the lethal injection to speed up Henry's passing so that she could claim it for herself, but she wasn't counting on Boston sniffing out her plans. The sad atmosphere of the funeral turned into a scene of shock and disbelief. News of the crime spread like wildfire. Buster, the once overlooked smallish dog, became a hero. People who knew Clara were stunned. They never knew such a young and beautiful woman could harm her own innocent uncle. The truth had been exposed by a loyal dog and a perceptive officer. Buster not only mourned his owner's death, but also helped expose the truth. While justice was served, a part of Buster ached for the gentle hand that used to scratch his ears and the walks in the park they shared. Officer Ramirez was touched by the dog's unwavering loyalty, and he decided to adopt Buster. Life with Officer Ramirez was good, yet a part of Buster remained with Henry. One sunny afternoon, Officer Ramirez took Buster to visit his old friend's grave. As Buster stood beside the headstone, a gentle breeze rustled the leaves. He closed his eyes, and for a fleeting moment, a warm feeling filled him. It was a memory of Henry's kind smile. In that quiet moment, Buster placed the cherished stick beside the headstone. The dog wagged his tail as if making a silent promise to carry their bond in his heart forever. What a story. Do you know any pets that are brave as Buster? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.